Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning and welcome to our annual sunrise special out at Holiday Lights at Calm. It's great to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen here with Alex Fisher. You know, we know that there has been a lot of darkness and hardship this year, but there's so much joy and light to be found in this season. And we just want to bring you a little bit of that this morning. Absolutely. You know, 2020 has been a difficult year for so many of us. So in regards to the coronavirus pandemic, but also we know a lot of people have lost their jobs. It's been just a really dark time. So we're trying to end the year at least uh, this morning. Turn the light on for all of you this morning and just spread some holiday cheer and I really don't think there's a better place to find holiday cheer <laughs> than holiday lights at call because as you can see it's a little different this year we've been talking about how different this display is this year and as you can see it truly is a winter wonderland this is one of the differences this year yeah. that I mean is a great difference because it's totally new but it's really beautiful and if you've been out here with your family so far you know that but we're going to show you around later on this morning we We've got some beautiful um, musical guests to share with you to bring up your spirits. Uh, so we're going to have all of that still ahead this morning. But first, we do want to start with your top headlines. Nicole Gitsky is standing by in studio for us, holding down the fort, and she has a look at our top news in just a moment. Yeah, but first, we're going to turn things over to Kevin Charette. He is somewhere on the grounds here <laughs> on this at, here at Calm. And what's great about this is we've got a mile worth of track uh, here at Calm. So. Uh, there is a, a, a lot of display here to see, and Kevin's wandering somewhere around here. Uh, Kev, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I've made my way through uh, uh, the drive here at Calm. It's just a spectacular side, and you know, this is a, a different year. A lot of times we're here at Calm, and uh, we've got tons of guests. We're going to do things a little bit different uh, this year, but we wanted to bring uh, the lights of Calm to you, to your home in case you can't come out here, and again, it is just beautiful. Josh Barnett and his crew have done a wonderful job. Lana and her team, it's so nice to see that this display continues on, even in the midst of a pandemic. So we've got a lot coming your way throughout the morning. I'll tell you, the weather's been great to come out and enjoy these lights, and we're looking at a great Friday evening for everybody if they want to come on out. We do have some cloud cover around uh, Kern County right now in the valley, 46 degrees. Uh, we will see clearing throughout the day, and you can see those temperatures will be back up into the upper 50s. For the mountains, uh, to Hatchby this morning, uh, we're a little on the cool side, 32 degrees with that west wind at 7. The winds will be fairly light today. And then as we take a look at the temperatures, we expect uh, to rise right near 50 degrees. The weekend also looking good around the area. I'll have much more on that coming your way in just a little bit. For now, we'll send it back over to you. All right, Kev, uh, thanks so much. All right, let's go ahead and check on your top headlines now. And Nicole Gitsky has a look at those. She's holding down the fort in our 17 News studio. Nicole, good morning to you. Good morning, Maddie and Alex. Thank you guys for that. Now, we're going to begin this morning with the coronavirus pandemic as the first COVID-19 vaccines arrived in the Golden Empire yesterday. Here's the moment Dr. Arash Hadari of Kern Medical became the first person in Kern County to receive the COVID vaccine. Hadari was one of five Kern Medical frontline workers to get the shot yesterday just after noon, only two hours after the vaccines first arrived. Hadari says getting the shot was something he volunteered for to send a message. Just volunteer to show the public that this is safe. Uh, we're chasing this virus safety for many, many weeks, and we know it's safe. That's the reason I volunteered to get the first vaccine. In total, Kern Medical received roughly 2,000 vaccines, and so did Dignity Health. Earlier in their day, Adventist Health received its first shipment. The downtown campus received nearly 1,000 doses before the shots were stored in a special freezer. Those who received the vaccine yesterday says this provides a glimmer of hope. This is the beginning of hopefully the end of this pandemic. And, and so this is a really important day all over Kern County because I know the other hospitals have gotten theirs and they're starting their vaccination process too. So it's a big day. 
The Pfizer vaccine requires two doses in order to be as effective as possible. The second dose must be administered 21 days after the first. Frontline medical workers will be the first to receive the vaccine. And the first vaccines come as we are continuing to see a surge of cases here in Kern County. Kern Public Health reported six new deaths yesterday, along with more than 1,100 new cases. More than 22,000 people are isolating at home with an active case of the virus. 311 people are in the hospital and 62 are in the ICU. So far, 476 people have lost their lives to COVID-19. More than 12,000 people have been infected just since Thanksgiving. That number is more than the total number of cases for September and October combined. On average, 895 people are testing positive each day. Our single day peak is December 9th with more than 1300 cases and our testing positivity rate is more than 19%. That's more than a 4% increase from two weeks ago. And that's a look at some of your top stories making news on this Friday. We'll send it back over to Maddie and Alex. And guys, I have done this drive through already once, and I think I'm going to do it again. It is such a great way to see the lights. <laughs> you get to be in your car with the heat on. It's perfect. That's true, because it's a little chilly out here this morning. Uh, it, we've been out here, though, when it's been a lot colder, so it's really not bad, but it is just beautiful. Absolutely. You know, right now where we're standing is about halfway through the displays, which means that you can't see it, but there's a lot of display <laughs> um, out that way. And, of course, you can see all the lights that goes as far as the eye can see. We're talking about a mile worth of track here, uh, and it is a, a gorgeous display. And this truly is, I did it last weekend, it truly is a different experience, a lot mm -hmm. of work but went behind this and of course it looks absolutely beautiful out here we're just trying to uh, get you in the holiday spirit and of course we were talking about how things are looking a little different this year and one of the staples at holiday lights at calm is the railroad uh, a lot of people like to ride the oh, train yeah. during Gotta ride it. Uh, holiday lights unfortunately it is closed this year because of the coronavirus pandemic but those volunteers <laughs> who work out on the train that including my grandpa uh, they say that they are getting ready for next year and they're still working hard during the pandemic. Yeah, they said they're going to really make up for it next year uh, when they can be back operating those trains. And 17's Taylor Schaub caught up with them and he has a peek at what they're working on right now. Taylor? Well, good morning, Maddie and Alex. That's right. The group of 10 plus retirees has been working around the calendar to make Calm's most okay. attractive really attraction have a new addition. For kids growing up in Kern County, a trip around the track at the Central California Children's Railroad has always felt like the perfect way to kick off Christmas. It's an annual event that we're, we're very, very excited about all the time. For more than 15 years, Randy Gruber and a group of retired volunteers have spent their winters running Kern's very own Polar Express. That's what keeps us going. But when Calm decided to convert their annual holiday light show to a drive through the trains were halted. Obviously, we were uh, disappointed um, that we were not able to run this year. That's when they decided to get to work on a new land for the locomotive. It kind of fueled our fire in our uh, latest project that we have going on, and that's our uh, western town. The Hollywood-style western town is three-quarter scale, filled with old-fashioned replicas of banks, hotels, and restaurants. It's, it's kind of our own version of a, a western storefront that, that we feel will not only be attractive to look at, but also interesting and um, educational for, for the thousands of students that, that visit Calm and uh, the train each year. The former educator says he's counting down the days until he can hear those engines roar and the sound of all aboard. We're having um, a, a lot of fun putting this together, a lot of creativity, and it's like any other project that you're really building for someone else. Now, Alex and Maddie Gruber says they're about 75% of the way done with this new project and should debut sometime in 2021. Back to you guys. We've got news around the nation now. It's crunch time in Washington, and it looks like lawmakers will be working through the weekend to save small businesses and get money into the pockets of those struggling. Tracy Potts has the latest on the COVID financial relief, the government shutdown deadline, and who's getting vaccinated today? 
Hi, Nicole. Good morning, everyone. Key lawmakers on Capitol Hill have been told it's their turn to get the COVID vaccine as they scramble to provide relief and help Americans keep a roof over their head and food on their tables this holiday. For millions of Americans devastated by COVID-19, losing benefits just after Christmas, lawmakers promise help is on the way. We're going to stay right here, right here, until we're finished, even if that means working through the weekend, which is highly likely. We're very close to an agreement. But the details really matter. Details on $900 billion to help small businesses and extend unemployment. 885,000 Americans filed for the first time last week. To be honest, I run out of what I'm going to do next. There's $600 for every eligible adult. Not everyone wants that. What could be dumber as an idea to print up money we don't have? This emergency relief includes millions to distribute vaccines. Vice President and Mrs. Pence and the Surgeon General get theirs today with key members of Congress. Up next, the FDA could approve a second vaccine today as the U.S. hits another day of record cases. I think by next Christmas will be close to normal. President-elect Joe Biden on the late show last night urging Americans to hold out one more year. Midnight tonight is the deadline to avoid a government shutdown. Since lawmakers want to do that and COVID relief together, they're likely to pass another short-term funding extension today to get them through the weekend and try to make this happen. I'm Tracy Potts, 17 News. And in your 17 Crime Watch, the search continues for a man wanted for taking his own daughter hostage in California City. Now, it started about 11 a.m. yesterday when Cal City police got a call of a domestic dispute. Police say a man had kidnapped his six-month-old daughter and was carrying a gun. They caught up to him and made contact, but the man wouldn't come out. So the sheriff's office SWAT team got involved arriving after 3 p.m. Uh, they were able to safely retrieve the six-month-old six infant. Uh, the infant was not hurt. Uh, she was medically treated, evaluated. Uh, she is currently in the custody of her mother. Uh, the suspect, however, was able to flee, uh, and so his location is currently not known. Police say the man they're looking for is 31-year-old Devin Holland. No one was injured throughout the ordeal. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.